Occasionally, when we have to take the derivative of a composite function, it turns out that there are multiple functions all composed together, more than just one function plunked into another. So sometimes we have to complete multiple chain rules in order to find the derivative of a function. So let's look at two examples where we have to use the chain rule more than once to find the derivative. So our original function here, we have the natural log of x cubed minus e to the two to the x minus x cubed plus one plus six, all raised to the 10th power. So one of the first things we need to do is identify what is the outermost function in this case. So here the outermost function is the 10th power, which means that we're starting this off as a polynomial type of chain rule. So when we did that, we said that we're gonna let z be whatever is inside the parentheses that's raised to the power. In this case, z is gonna be the natural log of x cubed minus e to the two to the x minus x cubed plus one plus six. So my z here is the inside function. Now, our shortcut tells us that the derivative then of my original function should be 10z to the ninth, so the power would come down, subtract one from the power, times dz dx, the derivative of z with respect to x. So if my z function was something simple, we'd be almost done. However, when we try to put this together, what we notice is that in order to find dz dx, this critical piece that we're multiplying by, I actually have to do another chain rule because to find the derivative of z with respect to x means taking the derivative of the natural log of something complicated. So I'm gonna do a sidebar and I'm gonna say, okay, well, then let's let w equal whatever is inside the natural log, because now I'm doing a natural log chain rule. So w equals x cubed minus e to the two to the x minus x squared plus one plus six. So the derivative of z with respect to x, we can now use our chain rule shortcut with respect to w. So that's gonna be one over w, because we're using the chain rule, times dw dx. So now, if we had the derivative of w, we would be all set. However, when we look at w, we see that there's one more chain rule, that power of e. So to find dw dx, we have to be a little more careful. So again, we're gonna do this on the side. So here, to find dw dx, we're gonna do a u substitution. u is a variable that we haven't used yet. So we're gonna let u equal two to the x minus x squared plus one. And so du dx will be two to the x times the natural log of two minus two x and the derivative of one is zero. Because now, when I go to take the derivative of w with respect to x, I go to the first term and I get three x squared. But when I go to the second term, I need to use a chain rule. So that's where this comes in. So my chain rule says that I'm gonna have e to the u times du dx. e to the two to the x minus x squared plus one times du dx, which was two to the x, times the natural log of two minus two x. So now this dw dx has to come back over here and get substituted in. So dw dx is this whole function right here. But remember, my w is this function here. So this dw dx is gonna end up in the numerator. So I'm gonna get, 3x squared minus e to the 2 to the x minus x squared plus 1 times 2 to the x ln 2 minus 2x divided by w, which is x cubed minus e to the 2 to the x minus x squared plus 1 all plus six. So that 
is my dw times my one over w. And now I need to take that and plug it in for dz dx. So dz dx is this whole term here. Okay, now remember that my original function, the derivative was gonna be 10 z to the ninth times dz dx. So that means I need to plug in z to raise to the ninth power, and I need to plug in dz dx over on the left. So once I carefully plug all of that in, I get the following. Notice here that if I go back to my original outline, I needed 10 z to the ninth. So that's this term here, 10, this is my z to the ninth. And then I needed times dz dx. Well, dz dx, the derivative of z with respect to x, looked like this. And again, within that, we had to do a w substitution and we had to do a u substitution. So there were three chain rules in this problem. But as long as we keep working through carefully and we find all our derivatives, we can put them all back together to get our ultimate final answer. Let's try one more. Example two, if f of x equals e raised to the x cubed minus two natural log of five x to the eighth all to the 16th power, find the derivative. So here, again, we see that there's gonna be multiple chain rules involved in this problem. What we need to do is identify what the outermost function was so we know where to start. So here, the e function is gonna be our outermost function which means we're operating on an e to the z type of chain rule situation. So my z is always the power of e. So that's gonna be x cubed minus two ln of five x to the eighth, all raised to the 16th power. What we know from before is that my derivative, f prime of x is gonna equal e to the z times dz dx. The e to the z part we could do now because we could plug z in, but we need dz dx to multiply by. So in order to find dz dx, we're gonna have to do another substitution here. So dz dx is what we need. So again, I'm gonna use the letter w for the next part of my substitution. So if I look at what z equals, I see that I have a parenthesis raised to a power. So I'm gonna let w equal what's inside my parenthesis. So x cubed minus two ln five x to the eighth. And then I can rewrite z as w to the 16th. So with this relationship, my dz dx is gonna equal 16 w to the 15th times dw dx. So again, I would have the 16 w to the 15th, and if I had dw dx, I could then start back substituting. But I don't yet have dw dx. So to get dw dx, I need to go back and I need to do one more substitution. So dw dx, means I'm taking the derivative of w with respect to x. The first term I can take the derivative of with no problem. I get three x squared. But the second term, I need to do another substitution. So here, I'm gonna let u equal five x to the eighth, which now means that the part that I wanna take the derivative of is minus two times one over u times du dx. So my du dx here is gonna give me 40x to the seventh. So now, plugging all of these things in for dw dx, I have three x squared minus two times one over u, which was five x to the eighth, times 40x to the seventh. 
I want to do a little bit of simplification here. I'm coming over here. So I have 3x squared minus, now I have a 2 times a 40 all divided by 5. So that's going to give me 16, my constants here. So I multiplied the 2 and the 40, and then I divided by 5. And then I have an x to the 7th over x to the 8th. The 7x is on top will cancel with 7 of the x's on the bottom, leaving me with 16 over x there. So my dw dx is 3x squared minus 16 over x. So that I'm going to substitute back in over here. So that means I have 16 times. Now w to the 15th is x cubed minus 2 natural log 5x to the 8th all raised to the 15th times our 3x squared minus 16 over x. So now my dw dx is what I needed so that I had my whole dz dx, which is what I have to plug in here to get my final answer. So combining everything, including plugging my z back in for e, I'm going to get the first term is my e to the z. I get the same thing back when I take the derivative of an e term, but then I have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the power. When I look at the power, I first notice that I'm in a parentheses to a power situation, so I'm losing the polynomial chain rule. So I notice that the 16 comes down, everything inside stays the same, and I subtract one from the power. But I have to remember to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. When I move to the inside, the first part is straightforward. But then the second part, I need to do one more chain rule because of that natural log term. So here, ultimately, my derivative is very long. But if I'm really careful and I label everything as I go, I can continue substituting until I get all the chain rules in place to get my final answer.